All right, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton. This is Marissa. Today we're going to do some cinematic portraits. The most important thing you need to remember is the word cinematic is super clickbaity. So welcome to the stream. <laughs> no, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about how people throw that around all the time. What does it really mean? Like what makes something cinematic? I actually did a quick Google. I will not throw shade on people. You'll see a lot of things if you say that. <laughs> it's not a lot of those things. So if we think about movies and how close-ups are in movies and how we uh, get emotion from people using, you know, in cinema, in movies as would be, these are the things we're going to explore. So there's a few different areas of it that we're going to work through. Part of it is framing, part of it's color use, and part of it is the light, obviously. And we're going to kind of build up a couple of portraits. This is not wear a costume and dress up and be, ooh, that, that's not what I mean by cinematic. That's, that's not my deal. I'm gonna show you how to create deep portraits that you could use for anybody. It could be a CEO portrait, it could be anybody. You, you can use these techniques. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about framing because that's how we're gonna get our shot set up. You see, I don't have a background. And that's because when we're doing cinematic shots, we wanna think about frames inside frames. You see this a lot. When you're talking about movies, you often see people, uh, you know, through a window or in this corner where there's some, uh, the shadow over here. We're gonna use part of our background, part of our uh, setup here. We, I have black and white. We'll do a little contrast to create a bit of a frame for Marissa before we start. So I'll have you go over here. I should also mention too that I have a podcast now. If you're not listening, you should be. <laughs> it's Adorama Voice with Daniel Norton. You can find me on wherever you find podcasts. Seth has pinned a link in the chat, so please check it out and uh, you can listen, then you don't have to look at my face, which is kind of nice. All right, so, all right, so like I said, we're gonna talk about frames within frames. So instead of putting the background directly behind Marissa so that she's completely covered by it, we're gonna create a, a side frame of the dark, and then we're gonna use the light, and we're gonna play around with it. So this is just a piece of duvetine, or a roll of duvetine as it would be. I'm gonna swing it over here. Now, I'm fortunate enough to, people always ask me about how you put these things up. This is just a C-stand. And I'm just kind of putting it on the arm. It will absolutely never, ever look straight, so Seth will always give me a hard time about it. because <laughs> your brain's lopsided. Yeah, well, the reason why I never look straight is because when you put the clamp on it, it does that, but that's okay. We'll let Seth believe it's because I'm lopsided. Now, of course, safety first. We're gonna throw a, sand a sandbag on it. We always put the sandbag on the long leg, and all the weight goes over that, of course. Okay, so we're gonna start here. I'm just gonna go a little taller. It's super crooked, right? Oh my god. It's so bad. <laughs> the key the key to this is the crooked background. Just take one shoe off, you're fine. It's so bad. <laughs> we'll just we'll lean the whole set that way. All right, so we're gonna play around with the frame of the of the darkness. Maybe we'll put her in front of it for some in in separate in others. We're gonna use it for depth. The second thing we're gonna think about here is color. Oftentimes in cinematic stuff, we're gonna use contrasting colors, but overall the scene's gonna have monochrome with a punch, right? So we've got Marissa in blue. Marissa has blue eyes. So we're gonna work with blue as one of our colors, as our punch of color, and then we're gonna do the, the rest of it in a bit of a more kind of the, the contrast of that. So we're gonna do kind of a warmish feel against the blue. That's gonna be our, our setup there. And positioning of the light is also gonna be really important here. We're gonna think about light not so much as, oh, pretty portrait, I read this book in 1975, you put the light right here, Rembrandt lighting. We're going to put the light what, in a way that seems natural, which generally is going to mean the light is gonna be higher than we would normally use it. And also generally bigger and further away. So I'm gonna go with this octagon as my main light. Start with, I did, I did fix it with a grid because I want some control. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our light. Now, it, again, we're not making a movie. Well, I, oh, we kind of are making a movie. Huh. <laughs> but we're not making a movie here, right? We're making a photo. So I can get the light closer than you normally would. In a lot of cinematic stuff, the light's further back, obviously, because we have to light a whole scene. That octa melts right into that black thing. Okay. The octa is going into the black thing, so you can't see it, so I'm gonna fix that because we are all about there go. production value here. I had that window open earlier because it is warm in here in New York today. Hey, Gavin. Hey, hey, Gavin. I was like, Gavin, make it rain. And he did, but not the way that I meant. 
All right, so, <laughs> right? So, this is why I keep in the restaurant. She's the only person that laughs at my jokes. All right. So I'm going to, we've got the light again. It's a bit further away than I normally would put it. This is going, it's a bit higher than I normally would put it. We're going to use a little bit more shadow than we normally would use. So right now we're just kind of roughing things in place, looking at our scene, figuring out, wow, that really is crooked. All right, let me fix that. This might be the most crooked it's ever been. All right. Yes. <laughs> Cinematic dynamic. It's an indie film. It's an indie film, exactly. Uh, what's that? Oh, if anybody has any questions, let me know. You said there is a question, or? No. All right, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. I know we haven't got too far into this yet. I'm kind of uh, leading towards something. Better? Better. Yeah. All right, good. All right, there we go. Welcome to on set. Oh no, sorry, we already did that part. All right, so we. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna build up to this. Again, we're gonna start off with the light slightly high. Everything's gonna be neutral to work with. We're gonna use multiple lights here. That's gonna be important for depth. But for now, we're gonna work with her inside of a frame. I've got my camera here. We're gonna shoot horizontally. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use probably about, we'll go 50. I'm going to start with a little bit of a wider lens than I normally would because I want to create a sense that we're real close and in with the subject. We want to create that connection to the subject that you get in cinema, which often uses wider lenses for this kind of stuff. Okay, perfect. Okay, so just to get a basic setup here, I am actually setting my camera so that none of the light in the space affects my shot. We are going to play around a little bit with some constant lights after, but to start with, we're going to use flash. One of the best things about flash is that we can control our space. You can see that we're lighting up the space, right? But my camera is set at 100 ISO, which is the lowest within the normal range. It is set at 200th of a second, which is the shutter, the, the shutter sync speed, the fastest shutter sync speed. And then I've set my aperture so that effectively it is going to be uh, dark enough so it takes the room out. Now, obviously it's a mirrorless camera. I can look through it and see that it's dark enough, but we will take a picture just to prove it. Come over here to capture one. This is the 2470 F4 from Nikon. The preferred lens of uh, Daniel today. What? Okay. Well, All right, so Marissa had a question. Are you ever tempted to correct the photographer? Yes. There you go. All right, so. No, actually, not you. <laughs> All right, so I have the camera set. Uh, by the way, that's an interesting question. And what I would say is a photo shoot should be, in almost all cases, in my opinion, I'm going to put my opinion here, can I put my opinion, a collaboration. So if somebody suggests something to me, I am more than happy to, to listen to it. I don't always do it because I may have my own reasons as to not do it, but it should be a collaboration. If you come into this thing saying, my subject to it, just do what I say and not question it, that's going to create a bit of a vibe that wouldn't be the way that I like to work. So models, subjects are more than uh, welcome to make suggestions. Although I will make suggestions, but not oh. Oh. tell them what to do. Because there you go. Right. Make a suggestion, just don't tell me what to do. Okay, notice how Seth came into the shot and put that thing in the background? The light? <laughs> I know you're doing it like I, that. I just did that so you could... mad cluttered. <laughs> I just did that. I, I, he, he did that purposefully. But I just took that bad shot so you guys could see. All right, so let's move this over here. I didn't know you were doing half and half, half. Oh, yeah, no, I'm doing half and half. Well, well, not quite half enough. We're not collaborating, Daniel. We're not collaborating here. All right, so I'm going to move Marissa so that she is... Yeah, there you go. Don't lean too far this way, otherwise you'll break the black line. Now again, my light's up kind of high. I'm just in TTL right now. We'll see the, where the exposure takes us. TTL is through the lens metering. Okay, it's way bright. Oh, actually, it's because I have my exposure set up too. But there we go. It's on the darkish side, which is good. Okay, so it's giving us a bit of a darker exposure, which is okay. 
for us because the one other thing that we want to consider here or think about is that oftentimes in movies, the images are a little bit on the darker side as opposed to the brighter, punchier shots that we often have in still photography. We're not gonna go that far because it still is a still shot, but we, and we want to show a little bit more detail than we normally would, but right now we've got nothing, right? We have this light that's kind of coming in from one side. It's creating, it's a bit high, it's creating interesting light, it's not great light, because we just have one light source. So let's think a little bit about this. We want to create depth. So the way that we're going to do that with the background here is we're going to, now we need to light our background up so we can see that white to black separation. So I'm going to grab my other strobe, which is right here. This is another, by the way, I'm using Profoto B10s. That one is in a three foot octagon with a grid. This one's just going to be a bare head. I'm going to put it behind this black piece of duvetine and just blast it at the background. I kind of want to create some contrast here, so I'm going to just leave it at full power. And we're going to come back over here, switch to manual, and let's take a shot and see where we're at. What's going to happen here is we're going to start with this front image is going to be very, there we go. All right, so what do we get there? I left that full blast so that it kind of rips past. We're getting more light on her because, again, TTL didn't change the shot. I, left, I switched this one to manual. What's happening is we're getting fill light from the back. It's all kicking forward. We have to be aware of our environment. There's lots of light coming through. If Marissa was standing in a doorway and light was coming through the door, this is the vibe that you would get. You have lots of light ripping through, and then this interior light is very dull and dark. In fact, what we're going to do is create effectively, yeah, there we go. We're going to, that's a little bit flat and boring. So it's a little too filled in. So we have a couple of things that we could do. One would be to change our exposure to get it to be darker. We could turn the power down on the light back there, which is probably the simplest thing to do. So let's do that. Our background light is in the A group. It's at power 10. We're a bit bright. Now, I'm going to come over here to my exposure slider. And I'm going to bring this back so we can start to get a little bit more dull on her. So it feels a little bit better. Okay, there we go. So that's about a stop. So I'm going to come back in here. And I'm actually going to bring this down, the A light down, one full stop. And we're going to take another test shot. We're, again, we're building this shot a little bit at a time. There we go. Now we're getting something that feels a little bit more natural. There's light coming through the, the, the door. We're saying out here. It's kind of bringing it up. It's lighting it. We have light bouncing around. It's got some feel to it. She's got some separation. Obviously, it's a piece of duvetine and not a doorway, but we're just kind of working with it. And we can basically play around with this like this. The other thing we could do is we could move her. Go on the other side of the, the thing so you're on the white. Yeah. No, no, yeah, no, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then goes slightly. Not, not hiding, obviously. No. Yeah, yeah. We can also um, put something in front, right? We can play around with the idea of framing. Right, not hide back there. We can play around with the idea of framing her, right? Now she's here, and we have tons of light going to be coming from the background. I'm going to kill this front light for a second, and we're just going to use this backlight. Right? Now we're going to get light ripping through around the back, creating effectively what we might see if she was coming in from the outside. Again, this is imperfect light because it's light coming from the back. It's just kind of coming in and showing us what it might be like if Marissa was coming into the, to the space. Come forward a bit. Right, and I'm in an all white space. Of course, we're using this, the light around. If you didn't have, let's say, this all white space here, what you would need to do is maybe put a silk back there or something. I'm just bouncing it off a white wall. And what we're gonna do is we're starting to create light that's kind of natural with the space. I'm playing with the idea of the light being like this. Okay, so come back out here. That's just to show you guys what would happen there. And let's get you on the black all the way. Right. The further she comes onto the black, the less of the the white light from the back is going to affect her, right? So if she's over here now and we make a shot, right? Now she's completely in her own space. And this space out here is completely separate. This could be anything. Right now I'm just blasting it with a white wall. But let's create something a little more interesting back there. Now let's get into some idea of creating some shape and tone. I have this data light. We can actually create, which I'm just going to put over here. I'm just going to plug this guy in. This is not battery powered. There we go. Da, 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 da. Got a, bar, a barn door. We can create some shape. You could do this with some kind of a cookie and a strobe if you want. 
Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what we've got going, can they see it from the top? You can't, or, see you can't see it, okay. Well, let's kill this for a second, because that might help. Okay, so we've got this data light back here. Oh, yeah, that's very hard to see. Right, so we've got this data light back here, and I'm going to put my hand in front of it. Okay, so effectively what we've got is it's, it's creating a directional light, kind of like a slice pattern coming across the side. Now, of course, this is a constant light source, right? And we don't want it to seem unnatural per se, so I'm going to raise it a little higher. So now we've got some light coming through here. This could be, again, some kind of a cookie. There's lots of ways to do this. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create effectively a line of light from the background that's going to be a constant light exposure. So when I look through my camera, right, I can see that if I took a shot with no flash, it's going to still be almost completely black, right, because that's not doing anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial my shutter speed down. Because remember, your shutter speed is what's going to be the, the differentiation, right? Your, your flash is mostly controlled by your aperture in this situation, and your shutter speed controls the constant light, as does the aperture, obviously. The aperture is more of a universal uh, control where the shutter speed is gonna only control the background light. So I'm at a 20th of a second, 5.6, and what we're gonna get now is, we can see that lit up, hmm. Oh, I didn't turn off that flash. I right, turn off the flash. I'm just gonna move it out so you guys can see, because if I just turn stuff off sometimes, it's hard to understand what's going on. Okay, so this flash over here I'm turning off. This is in the, the A group. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now we're going with like a bit of a slower shot and we can just see that background light. If we take our B light, which is, this is B though, right? Do I have the batteries on the wrong? Hold on. Yeah, I got the batteries on the wrong light. This is the B light. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I confused everything. Okay. This is the B light here. The A light is up here. Yeah, the, let me just fix that now. So what's happening here is, let me just. That was my fault. My yeah, yeah. fault. No. What happened was when I charged up the batteries, I didn't put the, the lights on the right, <laughs> the, the batteries on the right things. So. Each light and each battery has a, a piece of tape on it that shows one of this. So I have the B light with the A battery. That's confusing things depending on where we're standing. Totally looked kind of like. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. I mean, and of course we're on opposite sides. So I'm like, no, that's the B light. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's the blooper rule. We'll cut that part out. Okay, so that's the A light. I'm going to leave that out. All right, we'll fix that. Boom. All right. Okay, so we're back in action here. This is the B light. Again, we've got that interesting. Interesting swipe coming through the background. It's got a little bit of warmth to it. It's a little underexposed. It's got that vibe going on. Now, here's the thing. If I leave this light where it was, it's not going to look right. It's coming from the wrong side, right? Because we want our light to make sense in the cinematic shot. So I'm going to move this light now to this side, to Marissa's side she doesn't like. <laughs> That's the good side. Okay, so again, I'm going to rise it up, raise it up higher than you normally would keeping all the weight over the legs so that it's safe. Okay. And again, this is now gonna go back to TTL. TTL is through the lens metering. I'm only firing this shot plus the constant light. I'm gonna turn off the overheads. And we'll see now that we can get a light that seems to make more sense, right? We've got light now that, oh, there we go, perfect. Yeah, she's looking good there, all right. So we can see that we've got this light. She's like, oh, what's going on here? <laughs> Right, and we've got this streak of light coming through, a little bit of shadow, there we go, good. Right, creating effectively space, right? Space that makes sense, something that's a little more interesting, it's not just flat and open. We do get a little bit of reflection on her hair over here, of course, from our light, but we're, we're losing her a little bit in this darkness. And even though this is where we're gonna break what kind of makes sense, <laughs> because of course, that's accurate, right? That's what light looks like, but we want it to really pop. She's, she's our, our star. We want to give her a little woof, right? So we're going to give her effectively a hair light. Is there a reason you use battery-powered strobe instead of plug-in? Is there a reason I use battery-powered strobe over plug-in or a pack? Because that's what I have uh, uh, right now. The, you know, Profoto, which is the brand that I'm typically using, has been primarily creating 
uh, battery powered strobes for the last few years. They do have some packs, but they're usually for the for like the big, huge studio stuff that is just beyond like the price point that I would be using for the work I do. So I've switched over to these. I used to use uh, plug-in strobes called Acute when they made them, which was a which was a Pro Photo light. So the simple answer, which is <laughs> Is that it's, I mean, there are advantages to having battery powered lights. Obviously, there's convenience to, to being able to, uh, to move them around. You saw how easy that was. But uh, for, you know, when you're getting a battery powered light, you've got to consider do you want to deal with the batteries? Is, is it worth the extra price if it is an extra price and stuff like that? And just figure out if it's worthwhile for you. There's certainly some disadvantages, like you need to charge the batteries, would be the most obvious one. Okay, so I'm in TTL. This is a beauty dish with the grid. I'm using all gridded light because I want to control it, the, the placement of it, because remember, I'm placing it kind of far back. Okay, there we go. That's not bad, right? We're getting now, oh, wow. We're getting lots of interesting faces here. Okay. <laughs> all right. no, you're, you're okay. Okay. There we go. So, again, we're getting this. And if you notice with the exposure, I'm keeping everything a little bit flat here. Our exposure is a little bit flat. Now, I am getting a little more light on her shadow side than I wanted. So I'm just going to bring the light back further. This is one reason why I'm using a grid, because I don't want this light to spill on the wall. Also, I left the overheads on, which is probably less than ideal. Yeah. <laughs> I need to get a clapper so I can be like, clap, boom. There we go. There we go. All right. Now we're getting this light coming from here. And we can control the density or the brightness of the light in the background now with our shutter speed. We can, you know, right now I'm at a 20th, I can drop it down. Obviously if you drop it down too much, it's not a completely dark space in here. We will start to pick up some light in the space, but I can give it a bit more light if I want. If that's the sun coming through, we can get nice clean light on her, plus that little hair light, which kind of doesn't make sense, but if you're gonna do anything in a cinematic shot, you gotta have a hair light. Hair light is like the, <laughs> the key to all this, right? We're creating depth, we're creating space, we're giving more. You probably notice that a lot of times when I'm making a portrait, I get in real nice and close, and this I wanna give her space. I'm, gi I'm framing her up inside this darkness for a reason, right? We can do more with shape. Let me see if I can back this up. Um, this light's in the shot, but I'm just gonna see what this looks like. I might do, a, I know I have the light overhead on. Okay, yep, I am gonna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna move this back even further. Again, I'm in TTL, it should automatically correct for me. And the duvetine more or less absorbs light, right? So when I'm shooting this forward, if this was like a V-flat, there's a reason why I'm not doing that, it would be white on this backside, it'd bounce into the wall and kill my effect. So that's why I'm using duvetine as opposed to a V-flat. This is coming this way, it's gonna cause a shadow on the wall. I'm actually gonna, now that you guys know what's there, I'm gonna move it in a little closer so I can control it better. Oh yeah, light up that spot right where there's like a stain on the wall. That's always a good, that one spot on the wall with the perfect wall with the one. All right, so here we go, turn this off again. Let me look at it. Okay, yes, now we're getting a little bit of a, I moved it closer so it might be too bright now, but let me look. There we go, right. Now we're getting something that feels a little bit more like, okay, that's cool, right? We're starting to get some depth, some feeling. That's fine, but, and I know, I know not everybody has one of these, but I've got to bust it out every time. They do make, who makes it? Westcott? Makes a projector, uh, projector that goes on to kind of Bowen's mount, I think. Uh, oh, it's a Pro Photo mount. There you go. So if you have Pro Photo. No, I, they, have, they have multiple mounts. They even have Pro Photo. Oh, they have multiple mounts. So uh, Westcott makes a projector. So I'm going to show you what a projector does. I use this one. Optical snoot, Optical snoot is what they call it. <laughs> uh, you know, it's snooty. So I personally like to use my hot lights for this, but if you want strobe, which will give you a lot more control, they've got uh, Westcott makes such a, such a device. And actually Seth has one as well that's a strobe. Well, that one's a homemade. Seth has a whole homemade one. So anytime somebody's like, oh, I got this new thing, just know that Seth had the original. The OG. Yeah, it's like 10 times the size and <laughs> It's, it's the OG Speedatron, and if you go back, what, three years or so, maybe longer, on Adorama TV, you can see a video where I borrowed it, <laughs> and Marissa's in the video, actually, yeah. <clears throat> and we just lit up your eyeball with it. Remember that? That was with the homemade? 
Yeah. And you didn't even get electrocuted. They put a sports in the retina. It's a stage light that they put a flash All right, so I'm, I'm putting this uh, projector on. It's going to allow me to throw a pattern on the wall, which hopefully you can see. I don't know if turning off the overheads will help with that. Right now it looks like a blob because it's out of focus. <laughs> That's, this is what my, what my world looks like in the morning before I put my glasses on. There we go. All right. I'm going to put this window down here. Now, when light comes through a window, it never looks like that, right? So you can always, you got to give it a little tilt, a little like that. The sun's over here a bit, right? We're going to give ourselves a little, little sh is that in the shot? Can you see it? <clears throat> okay. Again, you can get a project. You can also cut a pattern using a foam board or whatever to create your own window pattern. It's not the difference is there, and actually, I've done a video on this. Um, you can create those things. Okay, better that I focus on Marissa than the wall. Let me just. <laughs> there we go. Again, I'm shooting a pretty slow shutter speed right now, but she's not really getting. Okay, that's probably what it would really look like to you, but that doesn't feel right in a shot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually knock it out of focus a bit. I could do it by using a, wide, a wider aperture, but I'm a baller and I don't need to do that. This is the advantage of the projector is that I can change the focus of the background image. If you just use some, uh, some foam cord that you cut a hole in, you won't be able to do that without moving your whole setup around. There we go. I knocked it slightly out of focus. Now we've got something that's got a little bit more shape and feel. She's got that hair light, but you see how it looks subtle? And notice how everything in this image is kind of this like straw warm feel, right? The light behind her is, her skin tone's a little on the warm side. She has the golden glow of her hair, but we've got that little spot of blue. So our colors here are this kind of warm to, uh, to, to cool. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Nothing. All right, good. That means I'm either explaining it perfectly or totally losing everybody. Oh yeah, we've done all kinds of entry-level speed light uh, tutorials. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. Now, I've also got some color we can add, but first let's get a little creepier, right? So this is nice, right? This is like, oh, I'm on the farm and I'm going to get some corn or whatever you get on the horn. I know. Oh, <laughs> She's yeah. like, right? And that's all good. We've got this light coming through early morning, but we can make it, we can affect our feeling by thinking about the pattern of our light. This is light coming through the, the, the window. It's kind of end of day or mid morning, right? Because it's got a bit of an angle on it. But if we want to get a feeling that's more nighttime, more a little bit more oppressive, we can get our light up higher. Because since she's inside, right, we can tell that by our setting. If we take the light and we tip it more above her head, it's going to create more of like an interior light. You know, that light that they tell you never to do when you read that book from 1975 about photography. Huh. All right. So we're going to bring this light up. So if you have a modern light and the strobe is turned on, would it affect the overall exposure taking the shot? If I have a modeling light turned on, would it affect the exposure? Probably, it really depends on how bright the modeling light is. But yeah, I mean, any, if you're going to do a longer exposure, if, if effectively, the way to test that is to just take a shot without firing the flash, which you can do by just turning off, the, leave the modeling light on, and just turn off your, your, uh, your radio remote. Also, see if it has a dim <clears throat> setting. What's that? See if it has a dim setting. Also. Oh yeah, there's also dim settings. And if you have a dim setting, it'll kill it but I, I, when you shoot. That's a very good point. Thanks, Seth. All right, so... I move the position of the light. I'm leaving everything else the same. Of course, it's really bright because I'm at a slow shutter speed. Well, hold on. No, you're good. I'm going to bring my shutter speed back up. The reason why I'm going to do that is because I don't care about this background light right now. All right, here we go. I'm keeping the hair light. Okay, there we go. Oh, look at that. All right, so. Right, car rolling up the driveway. Now, of course, if the car's rolling up the driveway, where should the light be? up higher, right? Because the light's going to project up. So we have to think about the positioning of our light. It's either going to be straight across or it's going to be up a little bit as the, as the light kind of projects itself up. Okay. 
Well, I guess it'd be more straight, okay. I also like putting it on this corner to show some dimension. Yeah, I'm using the corner for that. <clears throat> the other thing we can do is the car headlight is either, it needs to have a different feel, right? So for now, I'm just gonna make it really warm, but I think we're gonna bust out some like industrial vapor or some kind of funkiness. Now, now today, modern lights would be bluer, right? Because they'd be like a LED light. But this is some old truck. You know, nobody, nobody's, nobody's intimidated by that new Mercedes you have with your LED headlights, right? It's got to be some old, like, Chevy. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can American me. <laughs> <laughs> they probably should be afraid of the, the, the LEDs, but okay, let's just try this. I'm going to bring my shutter speed back down. Nope, that's not the right button. Oop. Uh-oh. What am I shutting out? The, I think I changed my buttons when I, when I updated my firmware. Wow. Great. It doesn't do the thing anymore. Ah, bummer. Okay, I'll do it later. Okay, perfect. All right, so I had it set before where you could do it so you couldn't see the flush. All right, here we go. Okay, so I've adjusted my shutter speed now. Now we're getting this kind of, again, now this light is a little on the warmer side, but... She's cooler, right? Now she's too cool. Now it's weird, right? She's offset. She's in a different space. We want her in that same space. So, what's up? Yeah, when I press the button up front, unless there's a different button. No, that's the right one. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to, uh, actually, the better way to do it is to just take the, I'm going to bring this back up. We're going to go all warm to start with. So <clears throat> what I had done here was I adjusted my white balance here, but instead of doing that, I'm going to adjust it on the camera. I'm not really going to adjust it on the camera. I'm just going to take another shot where it's neutral, and then I'm going to do it in the capture one. And then just go over your settings. Yeah, I'm going to go over my settings. Okay, so we've got our camera set at a 40th of a second, 5.6, 100 ISO. That is the correct exposure to get the background light to look correct. If I turn off my strobe, let's do it piece by piece. That's what you get, right? None of the ambient light is affecting Marissa. She's in a different zone. So when I turn my strobe back on, we get, look scared. I'm scared? Yeah, there you go. She was, that was, that's, that's, that's a, that, yeah, you look scared there. Okay. So, no. Uh, so she's, she's confronting the, 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 the moment. Right. Yeah. So here, here we're combining two shots, right? She's falling off. She's looking into the darkness here. We've got this thing going on. We're losing this little edge here, so we can't see that she's kind of in a separate zone. So we're going to mess with that a little bit. But for now, just want to, I'm going to take this white balance, and I'm going to change it. I'm just going to make it a smidge warmer, the whole, the whole set. There we go. I'm just dragging it over. I'm using my eye. There you go. Now the whole thing has like a bit of a warmer feel to it. We are not getting, and if you look at it, it kind of looks like that the light is bouncing off the wall out there, the headlights, and then it's coming back and giving her that hair light. Right? It's all about positioning where I put it. Obviously, that's not what's happening. That's a flash. Now, what I want to do is I want to give a little more separation. So now I'm going to use this. This is a Roto light. Uh, Air, oh, hold on. AOS 2. It's a... LED light that can change all kinds of colors. I'm going to make this one warm in color, so it's going to go super warm. And I'm going to put it back here. <laughs> my, my menacing is not that menacing. We, we should know. I'm not, I'm, not a, I'm not really a horror person. That's right. So, no, okay. I'm going to crank this. I had it really low in power, but obviously that wasn't enough. So I'm just going to come up and crank it. There we go. Now I'm letting Seth up. Okay, so I've got... Let's, check, let's see what's going on here. We've got the data light projecting a pattern. We've got the roto light throwing some warm, creepy light. Oh, that's actually kind of nice, creepy light on you. Okay. We're going to get creepier as we go. I have to... You gotta, you know, uh, yeah, well, slightly awkward is my is my baseline. Okay. All right. There we go. So now we're getting. I, I kind of brought up the overall exposure back here just so we can see that line defined better. This is now a little bit hotter. 
because of the way she moved, which I actually like. And now, again, the whole thing has this like singular tone to it, this kind of warm tone, and then she pops out with the blue. That's how we're creating our, our space, our depth. I had a drink somewhere. Did I finish it? Did I leave my drink out there? I think I was losing his voice. Okay. You know that I'm getting a drink. Sorry, guys. So... <clears throat> Again, we're still got relatively pretty light. Now, if this was like a standard portrait, this is not necessarily your ideal light. We've got a lot of shadow in her eyes and stuff. We're creating something that feels a little bit more natural, but we're still using a big soft light to create it. So we still get a little bit of this kind of kick. Our highlights here are popping a little bit and it feels like it should work with this. I feel like that light in the back is a little bit, should be a little bit brighter proportionately. What's that? No, the rotor lights I'm good with. You want that to be brighter? Bigger, yeah. Yeah, I agree. So we can do a couple of things. So Seth's mentioning the window is a little bit small. I agree with that. I kind of wish I had more windows. So there's a couple ways we can deal with that. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to I'm going with a, a slower shutter speed to make it brighter as well because it doesn't feel right. And the way I'm going to make it bigger is I'm going to just sort of back it up. So I'm going to back this up to get the window to be bigger. Yeah, you can see where the rotor light is. <laughs> this is this is the the it's like a trauma film where you can see like the you can see the, uh, the you can see the you can see the the photo equipment back there. <laughs> Love it. Okay, so that's bigger. I think that is a little bit better because I backed that up and just in my exposure, I'm going to drop this guy down a bit. Again, I'm just finessing these lights to get them to where I like the look. Because it's a constant light source, I can, I can just kind of bring it in and do that. I think that should be good. Yeah. Okay, I just moved it a little closer. Let me just make sure it's at all going to work, and then I'll show it. There we go. Okay. So I effectively moved this light closer so that it wasn't in throwing a shadow anymore, but it was still giving that little bit of uh, separation. And... Of course, I moved the data light. They can see that, right? What we're doing is we're creating a solid line here. Yeah, exactly. We got this going there. Okay, so now, now we get a. Now we have to get right. Exactly. So. So imagine, imagine that there's something. No, no, you're tough. There's, she's been running long enough. Now she's gonna stand up to the killer tomato. I'm the final girl. Yep, final girl. Let's get that final girl vibe. Here we go. There we go. Boom. Where's has got the fire? Really? No, I wasn't that's, 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 that's I'm ready. Okay, I can do it. Now. All right, good. All right, here we go. Okay. But the tomato's over here. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> oh, she wasn't ready. Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Like, All right, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay. Marissa's fighting. She's tough. <laughs> that's how you punch, right? No, not, not at all. Okay. So, so step, come forward a tiny bit. The closer she comes to me, by the way, the, uh, the steeper the shadows will be in her face. Okay, so just be strong. No, strong. Good. Right, and now we're creating more of a shadow. So if we want that depth, that dark eye, then we want her under the light more. If we want more light on her face, a little bit less than that, then we want to have her step back. That's how you control this overhead light. It's real simple, take a step back. Good. So they can see the difference. See, and now we're filled in a bit more. So it kind of comes down to what you want. If you want it to be a little bit prettier. So, so here she's like one of the actors. Here she's headliner. <laughs> we got to see her face. She, she you know, paid for that. So here we're getting, um, but actually when she backed up, she came out of the, the, the hair light. So come forward a little bit. Let's get, okay, then come this way a little bit. I'm going to get everything back in place and then we'll explain the whole setup again. Ooh, all right, so now we've got, we'll shoot it and then we'll explain. Oh, I like that, there we go, okay. Oh, hold on, is my, is guy not coming off? No, he's not, okay. 
a light. I feel like you need like a like somebody with an axe in that window. <laughs> Could use the use the the window light. Just like having like a like Freddy Krueger's. Oh yeah, Seth, you got to stand in. All right. All right, here we go. She's tough. She's ready. She's Marissa. There we go. Uh-oh, the bots are coming. All right, so here, oh, we finally got, a, we got that shot. The shot came with the bots. Okay, I'm going to back up a tiny bit. You, you got it now. Marissa's killing it. All right. I'm giving a little more space. Just want to see what we got here. So you can see that light in the shot a bit. Okay, good. Come over here. There we go. Tough. Boom. Okay, so now we're getting, again, overhead light, but she still looks good because it's a softer light. We've got this separation light, which I think I'm going to give a little bit more, and I feel like that background light could be, oh, sorry, could be a little bit brighter. Yeah. Go ahead. There might be a cool shot somewhere. Well, we're not sure. No, I mean, these are nice. I just think they'd be, they'd be changing. Yeah, all right. Ooh. Yeah. No, not that. <laughs> no, no. I think I think you're, you're you had it with that with the chin down a little bit and chin tougher. Down. Well, you, you, yeah, definitely that. Just wanted more brightness on the the hair light. Good. Nice. All right. So we're, again, we're getting this vibe that the light from back here is giving her the separation. If anything, I feel like the strobe in, over here. The front strobe might be a bit bright, so I'm just going to dial it down a smidge. Take the back up, on up a tiny bit. Here we go. Okay. All right. So let's break this down. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to turn the light on so you can see me. Okay. So we've got what is effectively an overhead light, right, which is the no-no, right? Oh, don't use overhead lights. But it's big. Right, and I've got it slightly in front of her, so it's kind of wrapping in and giving her some light, so it's not just like this tough shadow over her head. It's big and soft, right, so it works. I've got a light back here, which is giving her her hair light. Now, to somebody looking at this scene, especially if it was in a movie, it, it looks like there's a lot of light coming from this window, if you will, back here, which is the dado light. I'm gonna pull this whole thing over. Which is the dado light, which is right here. Can we see that? Uh, What's yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So there's a data light right here. I'm blocking it with my hand. That look, that's bouncing off this wall. There's really no light from that data light coming forward enough to do anything, right? We're looking at this one, um, but it feels like there is. And then just to kind of make everything tie together, I've got this rotolite light here, just giving a little bit of warm light to give this edge a separation. So, you know, if you were trying to build this out for like more of a set. I'd probably put some kind of like paneling here or something so it feels like a house. I just have the, the, the routine to show how it works. But this is what we're doing. We're creating space. We're creating depth that feels like the light is real. It's all coming from, what? there is a piece of paneling, yeah, but I don't think it's painted. Seth's getting the paneling because Seth, Seth does not let me get away with doing a half yeah. done shot. Yeah. Come on. Oh, that's All right, so here comes the paneling. Is it, is yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, we can clamp it maybe. Well, On, onto the arm. This will probably work. Okay. Uh, no, yeah. we got to clamp it to the arm. Uh, I got to roll the paper you up. Saying, you want this edge light? Yeah, I want it. Yeah, yeah. So, give me a clamp. All right, so set designer has come in. Seth designer. Seth designer has come in. All right, now we've got set. Okay, easy enough to do. Hit up your local uh, home improvement store. Buy a piece of paneling, paint it, sit in your studio for seven to ten years, <laughs> and you'll basically have what we have here. I'm going to have to move the set slightly, right? You're going to have to back up that light. Yeah. Okay, Sue. So. You want me to do it? Yep. Oh, but don't get it in the other light. All right. Okay, so what we're getting here is, oh, cool. That's actually wrapping around, too. I like that. That's good. All right, so it's in the shot a little bit, but I'll move it up. All right, so let's go through this now. We've actually brought a wall in. <laughs> I think what's, what's kind of cool about it 
Yeah. Is that like it's ripping past, you know, it's like that hard. Yeah, but I think you'll see with it, it's a light. We'll find out in a second. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what we get. Come this way slightly, Marissa. Okay. Yep, I'm just framing it up. Okay, so now we've got an actual wall. And because I never just want to give it all to you at once, we're going to go one light at a time. All right, I'm bringing my shutter speed up to 200th of a second. I'm turning off the backlight. So this should just be the strobe in the front. We probably won't see that constant light hardly at all. Yeah, okay. All right, that's just our strobe from the front. That's actually not bad the way it is. Come on! Now... Murder at that 70 show, come on. All right, now we're gonna turn on the second light, the, 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 the separation light. Okay, here we go. Okay, right, now we've got some, that's fine, right? But it doesn't make sense because that window light's too dull back there. So now, now's where shutter speed comes in. We start dialing the shutter speed down. I'm gonna go to a fifth of a second. And there it is. Too much, right? We're picking up the room now. We gotta close this. Yeah, all right. We kill this, we're gonna kill the room light as much as possible. This is why, um, <laughs> I was just, just talking the other day to somebody, I said, you know, this is why constant light can be a challenge. Is this in? Uh, sorry. Oh, it kind of worked. There we go, yeah. With Perfect, Seth. Seth. So creepy. All right, here we go. <laughs> With Seth, so creepy. I haven't heard that before. Okay, so now. Oh, they, they missed that shot. I'm going to go back to the one. Uh, the one with Seth? Yeah. Okay. There's Seth back there uh, setting the light up properly. Okay, that light looks maybe a smidge dark. Let's see. Although, I gotta be honest, it's not terrible. Okay, so what we're getting here, just so you can see what everything's doing. It's really like not edging this. No, not really. It's, it's too diffused, I think. Can I pull off this lens? Yeah, it's, you gotta take the whole thing apart to do it, though. No. It's kind of a pain. Yeah, you gotta take the. Okay, so let me just run through this whole setup. What are we on now? Can we see the oh, image? See. Oh, man, that's a lot. Yeah, we can see the image. Okay, so. I'm just gonna run through the image, guys, while Seth's adjusting that. The main light on her face is a three-foot octagon with a grid, right? It's creating a soft-ish feel to the light, but with shadow, so that we have some mood. The second strobe is giving her this hair light. This is a beauty dish with a grid. It's not typically how I would use a beauty dish. It's kind of far away, but that's creating a punchier light coming through. This is giving us this kind of reflected hard light. And we're simulating the fact that it's coming from this window right here, which is basically a dado light with a pattern on it, uh, a gobo pattern. Again, you could do this with the strobe too if you want. The overall kind of warm vibe back here is mostly caused by the rotolite, which we have set to this kind of orangey color. Everything else is set to kind of a normal daylight color. Yeah, let's see what it does. Let's give it a shot. We'll do one more shot, see if that made a difference. Yeah, it's not doing much. So it would, it's just giving us this little bit of separation here. That's all it's giving us. That's a. Because you know what it is? You, you want to inch it, but you're going to see the knob in the spot. Yeah. It, it oh, has a, a yoke on it. Hang on, let me rig it. All right, I'm going to turn this uh, stop box in the front while Seth's messing with that. I'm going to turn it a little bit more away from her to the front to try to get, some, uh, to get it off the background. Because the background maybe looks a little bit too lit for me. All right, I'm firing the strip again, Seth. There we go. So now we've dropped the wall deck darker. But when we did that, we got more light on her face. So it's a trade-off. It's out, it's out overhead. Okay. Let me just turn this back. I think I like it better here. I think I actually like that shadow on the wall now that I'm looking at it. Sometimes you think you want something, and then you do something else. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and I'm getting a flare now. Oh, okay. Lens flare. Boom. <laughs> that wouldn't be terrible if we couldn't tell that it was a light. Well, it could be like a kitchen light. I mean, Firestarter, you know, is, is, uh, is in the theater now. Yeah, definitely. And tilt it down, maybe, so it feels like a kitchen light. I'm trying to get that halo going on the wood, but it's just not hitting. No. Getting the stroke, dude. I think we're getting too much fill on her with that. Oh, that's actually good where you're at. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right, good. All right, here we go. Good. Okay, so... 
Now we're getting this like kind of overall halo. This is actually a mix of the constant light and the strobe. And actually with that doing that, I'm gonna actually move. Okay, hold on, we got creep. Hold on, here we go. All right, here we go, here we go, boom. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh. <laughs> She's looking the wrong way, that's for sure. All right, so we're gonna spin this light out a little bit more. I wanna see if I can get a little bit more on her face because we have now the roto light up there. So again, we're lighting in zones. We're lighting like little pieces. We're creating like little bits of light that kind of tie together to help make it feel like a space. Because one of the things that we get when we're doing, oftentimes when we're doing, still, oh, I guess probably get into focus. Okay. All right. Here we go. We got, <laughs> oh God. We got the scissors back there. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's... <laughs> All right. Let's do it without scissors. Let's go. No, let's, let's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. You're wondering what's happening. Good, all right. I just want to get some variety there, all right. Maybe punch in a little bit so that you're not Yeah, maybe. yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, so now I'm going to come in and let's, people have been waiting for this the whole time. Good. There we go. Powerful. Okay, good, here we go, everything looks good. One more. Good. Right, and now we got a little scene going on, right? <laughs> yeah, the yeah, scissors. Those are nice scissors, actually. These are awesome, these things, they're Yeah. Good, all right, so now we've got a little bit of a scene going on, right? It feels like it ties together. There's space, there's depth to it. And the way that we're accomplishing this really is using a lot of different styles of light too, right? We're using some punchy hard light, we're creating some shape, we're creating, using some soft light. Effectively bringing in, what, you wanna do something else? Well, I'm getting a bit of a flare. So it's, it's, yeah, it's off, it's a little bit soft. It's, let me see if I can get. Good, there we go. It's having trouble fo focusing into the flare. Yeah, it's not, that's, it's flaring into the lens. Yeah, well, all right, let me just do something here. Let me turn this off. Cool, let me just adjust this, guys. We're getting, uh, I think it's actually grabbing the back eye is what's happening because of the flare in the front. Cool, all right, let's try one more time. Cool. Oh, my camera reset itself. <laughs> That's what it looks like with the, the yeah, there we go. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna dial back down to a 20th. I brought my shutter speed up just so I could get everything like set the way I wanted it. Yeah, because we got LEDs flaring directly into the lens. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So that's gotta get the knife out. Okay. Good, one more. One more. Good. Yeah, that should be good. All right. Cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we got this little bit of uh, highlight on her cheek now. We've got the light coming from the back that feels like it's coming. Now, if we look at her overall e exposure on her face, if I was making like a normal uh, portrait, this would be too dark. But we're trying to create something that has some feel, some natural feel, a little bit of mystery, and that's why we're going with a little bit of darker exposure. If we were to pump this up to you know, where you might normally put an exposure here, you're gonna lose a lot of the, the, the flavor. You know, it just starts to look very flat. So don't do that. <laughs> okay, questions, oh, well, actually, we're so fast. It came together though, right? There's pieces, let me go through it one more time. Any questions, let me know. What about this? We're, we're talking about doing a cinematic shot. We want to think about our framing. We want to add depth. One good way to do that is to put the subject in effectively windows of space, windows of depth. So we've got a front piece here, which happens to be paneling now. We've got this background, which is a white wall that's going to, that's got some reflection going on. The shadow back there, the pattern is helping to create that depth. We want to make it feel like it has some kind of natural vibe to it. So we've put our light up a bit higher because most light inside your house is gonna be coming from the ceiling, right? Or a bit higher, right? So we wanna we want to keep the light up a little bit higher so it feels a little bit more, it's got some vibe in it like it's in a space. 
Then the light that's wrapping around in her hair, kind of the unnatural light, is being is kind of mimicking the reflection of the light that's coming from the background. Again, this is this we're doubling down on our depth. We've got this car or whatever that's shining light uh, through the window. It's bouncing off this wall. It's coming back. Because if you were in your house and that happened, you'd see light shine back over. The way we're duplicating that or well, having that vibe is we've got the beauty dish with the grid, so a hard light. We want it to be hard here because we want it to feel like that kind of light is coming back and smacking here. This creates something that feels like it's a natural shot or it feels like it makes sense even though obviously it's a whole bunch of lights all scattered around trying to create this vibe. The final thing is, again, color palette. We've got that pop of blue on her dress. If you zoom in real close, we get a pop of blue in her eyes, but the rest of it has a kind of an overall almost monochromatic warm feel. Questions, thoughts, concerns? Okay, while, uh, while I'm waiting to see if there's always a delay, so let's see if there any questions come in, I will pitch things. You can follow Marissa, Marissa Roper, right? Seth is last ex-witness. I'm Daniel Norton, what's that? Yeah, but Daniel Norton photographer. I just started a new podcast, A Voice with Daniel Norton. There is a pinned comment in the chat, so check that out. If you just type in any of your podcast things, just put my name in there, Daniel Norton, it should come right up. I'd love to hear from you. It's on Anchor, so you guys can call in and leave messages, and we can have a conversation that way. I will be back next week, actually, with food photography. I know. Very exciting. Get ready for the bologna sandwiches. No wedding cakes? No wedding cakes. Maybe. I'd love to do an ice cream cake, but it would melt. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? I, mean, I think we pretty much got it. That was, thank you for bringing the background, and that was, I tied it together. I mean, keep on asking about like different colors in the background, we just throw a different gel on. If you want a different, so if you didn't have something like this Rotolite, which can change into any color, for those asking about colors on the background, you could put a gel on your flash. What you don't want to do is just throw some random color on there, because it won't make sense. Remember, we stepped into this thinking, we want a color palette. I wanted this warm color to off, offset the blue. I, I went into the thing like that. So I think that a lot of times because we're given the power to use different colors because these uh, RGBW lights are so common now, we just start putting random colors for no reason. But in start watching and looking at stills from movies, you'll notice that they generally use two colors often contrasting each other. So like a blue and a, a warm or like, you know, a green and reddish colors. And this, this actually helps tie the image in with some subtlety and a punch. That's what you want to do. A little bit of a little spark of color with the overall rest of the image feeling a little bit more monochromatic. We don't want to do just random circus colors everywhere. That just looks gimmicky and like you didn't think about it ahead of time. Okay, excellent. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next week with the food photography. Let me know if you're watching this after the fact or you think of something. You can put a comment below with a question and I shall answer them. Marissa is Marissa Roper, as I said. I set this. So subscribe to the channel, of course, uh, Adorama TV, and ring the bell so you get notifications because we're doing more and more of these live streams. Like I said, I'm back next week, then I think Gavin's back the next week after that. So we're getting a lot more live streams for you guys, so be sure to subscribe.